Okay, in this video I want to start talking about the heaviside, or I've also heard it pronounced heaviside function. I don't know. Take your pick. I'm not sure which one's correct. I'll probably call it the heaviside function because I think that's, that's my guess. So it's also just known as the unit step function. So all this function is, you know, it's got a fancy name. You can think about it as being like a, a function that sort of turns on and turns off. So, you know, maybe this would be, for example, useful in, in you know, like a, a circuit or something modeling electricity. Certainly has other uses than that for sure. But that's kind of the idea. Maybe you can think about a current, it's off, and then it turns on. Okay, that's all there is to it. So the definition, we say h of t, that's going to equal 1 if t is greater than or equal to 0. So at time 0 and afterwards, the, the function is turned on, it equals 1. And prior to that, it's going to equal 0 if t is less than 0. So that's all there is to it. So it does kind of confuse people a little bit. So I just want to look at a couple, you know, basic, I just want to look at one simple example in this video, make a couple observations. And then we'll look at it a couple uh, other examples in another video. So, so the first thing I'm going to do here is let's graph this function. So we're going to graph a new function, h of t minus 1 minus h of t minus 3. So we've got a difference here of these heaviside functions. And the only thing that would really change, for example, maybe I can... I can draw a picture real quick. If you were to graph, for example, h of t minus 1, maybe if you remember from algebra, your, your graph shifting, the only thing that's going to change now is instead of it, you know, the original one, the, the current came on, if you want to think about it as being a current, at time t equals 0, now it's going to be shifted one unit to the right, so it won't turn on until we get to the t value of 1. So it'll turn on there, it would be 0 prior to that. And likewise, h of t minus 3, that graph would simply look like, well, now it's not going to get, it's not going to get kicked on until t equals 3, and then it'll be on, and then again, prior to that, it would be off. So that would be the graph for h of t minus 1, and this would be the graph for h of t minus 3. They're just starting and stopping at different places. Okay. I should say uh, stopping and starting at different places. Well, let's look at the graph of, of this one. So I think something's going to happen here at 1 and at 3. And in fact, that is the case here. And again, I wrote down the technical definitions here of h of t minus 1. Again, it says it's 0 if t is less than 1. If t is greater than or equal to 1, it, again, it turns on and the function now equals 1. And likewise for h of t minus 3. Well, let's see. Okay. As we get up to t, as we approach t equals 1, they're both off. So the difference would be 0 minus 0. So they would both be off prior to that. They would both be off prior to that. Now, what's going to happen when we plug 1 into this, into this function, this, this, you know, the difference, this difference function? What's going to happen? Well, at t equals 1, the, the first function is going to turn on. It's going to have a value of 1. The other one, though, still has a value of 0. So over that interval from 1 to 3, it's going to kick on. You know, again, up to, up to 3, this function is strictly equal to 0. It hasn't turned on yet. So this one's on, this one's still off, so the difference would be 1 minus 0. So it's just going to be 1 over that interval. Now, what happens when we get to t equals 3? Okay, at t equals 3, well, notice the first function, it equals 1 everywhere. Okay, so the, the first term, h of t minus 1, that one's still turned on. Uh, h of t minus 3, that one also now has a value of 1. So once we get to the value of t equals 3, this function is going to have a value of 1. This function is also going to have a value of 1. So their difference would become 0. So at t equals 3, I'm going to put a shaded in circle at 0. And since they're both you know, have a value of 1 after that, their difference will always be 1 minus 1 or 0. So, you know, again, maybe plot points, think about this a little bit more, but sort of the thing that, you know, geometrically you may notice what's happening in the graph, 
from this difference? Well, it kicks on at t equals 1, and then it kicks off at t equals 3. That's what's going on in the graph, right? It, it starts at, it, it becomes, it has a value of 1, the current is on from time t equals 1, up till t, t equals 3, not including 3, and then it's back off. So more generally, what we can say here, more generally, it simply says that if we have a, a function of the form h of t minus a minus h of t minus b, and this is assuming that uh, a is greater than 0 but is less than b, it's just analogous to what we did. It's going to kick on at time t equals a and then turn back off at time t equals b. So that's, that's all that would happen. So again, our graph, there's a, there's b. It's just going to look something like that. Okay, So it's kind of telling you the starting and stopping times for the current to be on. Again, I keep talking about a current. That's just how I like to think about it. You know, Of course, you don't have to think about it in terms of a current or electricity at all. It just helps me you know, relate it to something. Notice, too, if we took this, this function we just had, h of t minus a minus h of t minus b, if we take all of that and multiply it by a new function, g of t, the only thing that's going to change in our formula is between the values of a and b. Instead of having a value of 1, it's going to look like the function g of t. So the idea, you can kind of think about this function intuitively. You can think about it's going to, the graph is going to look like, the graph will look like g of t on the interval a to b. And I should say closed at a, open at b. It's going to look like the function g of t on this interval and 0 everywhere else. So maybe let's, uh, let's, let's graph one more. I think I said I was only going to do one, but why not? So let's graph this function f of t equals t squared. We've got h of t minus 1, h of t minus 2. So okay, this one's going to be pretty straightforward. So okay, at time t equals 1, this function t squared turns on. At time t equals 2, it's going to turn off. So it's going to be 0 at 2 and after. And it'll be 0 up to, up to but not including, t equals 1. And then I'm just going to graph. It's going to look like, it'll look like, t squared over this interval between 1 and 2. Well, let's just plot points. We know what t squared looks like. Think about, you know, okay, it's a function of t. If it was a function of x, it would be x squared. It would just be a parabola. Well, at t equals 1, if we plug 1 in, so I'm just thinking about t squared. I'm just plotting points here. So at t equals 1, t squared will give us a value of 1. So, okay, at 1, there's going to be a dot at 1. And then we're going to go over up to 2. 2 squared would be 4. That's where my open circle is going to be. So I'm kind of running out of room here, so not quite to scale. Again, it turns off at t equals 4. Excuse me, it turns off at t equals 2. Let me clarify that. It turns off at t equals 2. So it's going to get close to this uh, y value of 4, but not actually hit it. And again, we know that t squared, or x squared, if you want to think about it again that way, it's going to look like a parabola. So that would be our graph, okay? So again, it just looks like t squared over that interval from 1 to 2, and that all that's all there is to it in this case. So what I'm going to do in another example is I'm going to actually take a, a graph. So let me make a, a, a quick graph. So I'm going to look at a graph. It's going to be a little step, um, excuse me, it's going to be a little piecewise function. So going to look like that, and then like that, and then up till 3, there'll be an open circle, and then it kicks on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this graph using those step function, those heave aside functions. So I'm going to come up with a formula. Um, I'm going to come up with a formula for this graph using heave aside functions in the next video.